The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Peter Johnson at wheatpeatrealagriculture.com. We're here in Ontario and we look like we've grown an awesome wheat crop in 2024. And of course, what comes along? We haven't had it for a while, but the beast is back, fusarium. So what do we know about fusarium? Well, first we know that it's quite dependent on regions. There are regions where the fusarium pressure is quite high, almost 1996 levels, tremendous. There are other regions where it's not too bad. But when we look at it from a management standpoint, so as agronomists, as growers, we have to do our best to keep the level of toxin, the DON, the deoxygen of alanol, as low as possible. How do we do that? We harvest as early as we can. We dry the wheat anytime over 19%. That wheat is going to make more toxin. So we harvest early, we dry the wheat, but we got to get way better at targeting which fields we do first. So we've never scouted for fusarium before. How do we do that? And what do we know beyond over 19% get it out of the field? Well, here's a really interesting tidbit that Dave Hooker tweeted out, lodged wheat. If your wheat is lodged for five days, just five days before harvest, the lodged wheat increases in toxin from 27 to 51%. So that's pretty simple. I have a lodged wheat field. I have to harvest that field early if I can at all, because it's going to get more toxin. The other thing though, is I've got 10 wheat fields and they all headed at different times. They're different varieties. How do I know which field I should harvest first? Because the ones with the most fusarium, I got to get out of the field as quickly as I can. Well, that's where scouting comes in and we do what is called the fusarium head blight index. And that's a rating that gets us to a point where we can actually somewhat predict is that field going to be a problem for Dawn or is that field not a big issue and I can leave it? So how do we do that? Well, we have to start looking for fusarium. The first thing we have to start looking for is how many heads have any infection at all. One spikelet, uh, the whole head gone, whatever. Any infection at all. And so you look at this wheat and you say, gosh, I like, come on, Pete, I don't have to uh, do anything. I know this is ugly. And then I look at this wheat and I say, come on, this field's fine. Well, guess what? This field is not fine or this variety and a trick from Ellen Sperry, you look at this, you're looking kind of down at the heads. It's a little hard to see. This is also later maturing, might not have all developed yet, but if you just push the heads over, then all of a sudden you can see, gosh, that floor it's infected, that floor it's infected, that floor it's infected. There is more fusarium here than I realized. Okay. So how do we do the fusarium head blight index? First thing we do is we blindly, because that you'll, you'll go for where the fusarium is, you blindly grab a bunch of heads and you try to get about 10 heads because it's easiest if you can. And then you look and you say, okay, I have 10 heads or I have to add one, I have to subtract one. And then out of those 10 heads, how many of those heads have any infection at all? Do they have one floor? Is the whole head gone? Out of 10 heads, if three are gone, then that's three or 30%. And you do that in 10 spots in the field to get a representative sample. As you do that, you also say I have three heads, but what percentage of the head is actually gone? That's called severity. The number of heads infected is incidence. The amount of infection is severity. And so you say, well, that's pretty tough. I have one florid on this plant gone, Pete. What's the severity? It's actually pretty simple. Most heads, most wheat heads in Ontario have about 20 spikelets. So if one spikelet is gone, that's a 5% number. If I have four spikelets gone, that's 20%. When I get to this head, it's pretty simple. That's two thirds of the head. We do average severity. 
So in my example, let's say that on average, I have two out of 10 heads that are infected. So that's 20%. And let's say that out of that 20%, they're about 20% of the heads infected. So four florts on average, or four spike gets together on average. So 20% times 20%, that's 20 times 20 is 400. 400 divided by 100 gives me a fusarium index of four. So how does that help? Well, the research data is pretty clear. When Duane Falk did this way back originally, if you had a fusarium head blight index of three, that meant that a lot of the wheat coming out of that, that sample would be greater than six parts per million. So we just kind of extrapolate that and and our best guess is that if your fusarium head blight index is over two, that feels a problem. Wheat Pete thinks that it's over one, you want to pay attention. You want to, you, that's a suspect field. If it's under one, chances are you have no problem whatsoever. So there, a cool new tool because somehow we have to get the best quality wheat out of our wheat crop in Ontario that we can and we have not ever scouted for fusarium in this manner where we actually try to quantify it so that you can time your harvest so that you can try to get the best quality grain you, you have. And it, it's scouting, it's the fusarium head blight index, a, a new tool in the wheat arsenal to take to the field. And with that, Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, harvest awesome wheat.